Well, this is where our trail starts. We have to cross the Rio Grande. Kind of why I've got my boots in hand and I'm wearing my sandals because uh, I'm about to wake up the only way I know how. <laughs> Getting those feet cold and wet. Oh. oh, this is about to so, so suck. <sighs> oh, that sucks. That is just about the worst. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo. Those dry socks feel amazing. <laughs> Behind me is the ute drainage. Um, I don't know anything about it, truth be told. All I know is that there's a couple lakes at the top, a stream in between, and maybe some cutthroat. So that, uh, <laughs> that was enough for me to say, all right, let's go there. But I'm gonna get my hike on really early this morning, so it's time to get the boots on and just hoof it up this trail. <sighs> and we are 10 toes down on quite possibly the biggest adventure of the summer. I got the backpack loaded down and we have made it. I'm officially in the great state of Colorado. Beautiful Colorado, colorful, colorful Colorado. And uh, yeah, took us a while to get here last night. Let's roll some of that footage now. Wow, we made it to the trailhead. <laughs> I would say seeing that moose alone was well worth the drive, and that's a big shout out to my sister Caitlin because she's uh, she's a big moose gal, loves it, loves a good moose. <laughs> so that one's for you, Caters. And uh, yeah, we've got a lot of miles to go and uh, a lot of boot leather to tear up. So enough talking. Let's get on the trail. Let's get going. Bow. We are getting an altitude adjustment right now. It is, it is rough, slow going. Heavy pack doesn't help, but I will say there was like eight or, or ten nasty log jams that you had to either go up and around or you know, over. It was that can make for some really sketchy, sketchy hiking. You know, you're shifting balances. That's where you. That's where you're gonna pull something. But just trying to catch my breath, get my heart rate down a little bit, and I think. I think our first like official stop is uh, close up the trail, so 
We're almost there, almost there. This is incredible, oh my gosh. We finally found our creek. It's time to take this backpack off and set up camp. Well, it would seem as though someone left us a nice camp, so we might as well, might as well reuse it since we got it. Oh my gosh, okay. Since we're so close to Black Lake, it's gonna be a little bit buggy. That's the only problem with this camp. So otherwise, it looks just about perfect, so I'm gonna get, uh, Little little sheen on me here. Get all the deep going. Make sure they don't bother me. So here are the basics with my tent setup. Got the uh, blow up pillow. Got to have the sleeping pad. I don't know if I'll use them, but I got my bear bell set. Those are always nice to have, but there's not enough trees to hang it around, so I don't know. We'll see. Then I've got a bit more uh, robust tarp to put over the tent, and then your standard. Standard issue REI tent, and that's uh, that's home, home on wheels. <laughs> well, the tarp's not really as big as I remember. It'll do the job for at least a few nights, so I'm not really worried about that. It's if we get some wind at night, it might be a little bit chilly just because there's not all the protection that we're looking for, but I brought plenty of layers and that's why we do what we do. <laughs> Overpack. But yeah, it's time to get uh, get everything situated, get some lunch, hang the bear bag, and then we're, we're gonna be fishing. We're gonna be fishing, folks. I cannot wait. I think I'm actually gonna hang up the bear bells for this time. Alrighty, bear bells are up. And I know it might seem a little corny, but just having that sense of, of some sort of direction that something might be coming into camp, it uh, even if it never actually happens, it brings me the peace of mind that, uh, you know, out here in the middle of flipping nowhere, it's nice to have uh, comforts, be it real or perceived. <laughs> Just had a message come in. Please be safe and catch a ton of fish. Thanks, Dad. I sure will. <laughs> these uh, these Garmin inReach things, they're pretty nifty. I'll, I'll give them that. I'm thinking this is the perfect spot to rig up our rods, but also grab bites to eat. I'm a little hungry after that hike, so let's... Uh... Let's enjoy this view, what do you say? Oh my goodness. <laughs> It's almost fitting that my first fish of the day is an eastern transplant, just like myself. <laughs> That's a beautiful brook trout. Oh, my lanta. Yes. That is so sick. Look at him. Oh, dude. Oh, and just like that, <laughs> he's off. Woo! The skunk is off. That's so cool. <laughs> Pretty simple pattern we got that guy on. Just a pink ant, it's got a parachute on it and it sits high and it rides for days. And he loved, loved the looks of that. That is, oh, that's what you want, man. <laughs> Check him out, y'all. He has gotten beat up on. His fin and back are messed up. What have you been tussling with there, buddy? Huh? <laughs> that is just a gorgeous fish. 
Not native, but still so cool. There we go, that's a better fish. Oh man, that's a tank brook trout, holy cow. Yo, look at you, buddy. Now even though this little trout's technically not supposed to be here, I can give a big round of applause for this wild trout getting to this size. This is a nice fish for high country, holy cow. You guys see the dimensions on this thing? That is a beautiful brook trout. And much like all the rest, this is one plumpy boy. You have been eating so well, sir. The high country is treating him <laughs> mighty fine. <laughs> Let's send him back swimming. That was textbook high country stream. Right where he should have been, came up and just popped it, man. And you could tell almost immediately, you set that hook. A lot of the little brookies, I mean, they're coming right in. That guy, he said, no, pause. I need to I need to be here for a second. I'm gonna hold on. And boy did he hold on. That was that was so cool. That's such a good brookie. Now if we can just find a real grin, that'd be that'd be mighty fine too. <laughs> Let's shake and bake and maybe uh, pop back in there. That was the pool boss, you might have some friends, who knows? Wiped at it, came back around, full 360, and slammed it. That was so cool. Another nice little brookie. We'll send him back. Well, that was perfect. Pulling two nice fish out of that run. I think we keep on moving up and see if there's see if there's some more good stuff. Fingers crossed for the Rio Grande. Come on, baby. But again, can we quick talk about how chunky these fish are? This dude's belly's like popping out. Oh, well, he didn't like me. He didn't like me insulting his weight. I'm sorry. It's a term of endearment. You're chunky boy. You ever have one of those casts? where you know it's like, man, there should be a fish right there, and there actually is. Oh, that's the best. That is seriously the best feeling ever. Oh, <laughs> they're so floppy. He's gone, back in the drink. That was so sick, that was awesome. I'll save the, I'll save the real grants for tomorrow. This, the, today's all about brookies right now. This is incredible.
Well, I think this was gonna be our last, our last brookie for the day. It's getting, uh, getting close to dinner time, and let me tell you, I am very hungry. We've got a lot to do, a lot to take care of before we can actually lay our head down tonight. So we can't spend too much time on these these meadow brookies. We got to be serious and actually take care of business back at camp. But man, this this fish is beautiful. Let's let's get another look at this guy. A wild Colorado brookie to. Uh, to rival the best right there, man. That's an excellent, excellent fish. All right, hook is out. Let's, uh, let's get this guy back. It is quite hard to describe the level of nostalgia that these brook trout are bringing me right now. It's, I would say it's a 10 out of 10. I can think of so many trips. Dad and I running through little meadow streams like this, just bopping dry flies and catching chunky brook trout, man. They, they might not be native, but they're wild. And they've done such an amazing job of adapting and I don't know, I think there's something to, to applaud. There's something to celebrate there that a wild trout fishery like this is still doing, I would say, pretty well. <laughs> we're still looking for those Rio Grande though. I, I, I think we're gonna find some tomorrow. Yeah. Knock, knock on wood. But now we gotta switch gears. We gotta go from fish mode to camp mode. And I hiked down a nice collapsible jug. I think it holds like two, three gallons, I don't know. We're gonna fill it up right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my iodine pills in it so that it's de bacteria, de whatever, bad stuff that might be in this water. It'll be sanitized and done by the time we get back to camp. And what I've done since I'm a dum dum is I've actually put the correct tablet markings on my bag because I don't remember that stuff. It's easier to just look at this and think, oh, past Mike did this, he must be right. <laughs> And it's worked out so far, I should say, so. Yeah, eight tablets and we're down to drink, baby. One long hike later and we've made it back. As you can see, nothing is disturbed, which is good. Everything's right where we left it. And right now, I'm gonna go into probably dinner, change, eat, and then bed. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I'm pretty whooped. So first things first, let's grab that bear bag right where we left it. I'm sitting right next to a fire pit that looks very recently used, but I didn't get a straight answer from the ranger department and it changes all the time between moderate and high and very high. <laughs> it's never it's never usually low. So one of the best ways to, or well, in my opinion, is to make a backcountry meal is those propane burners. And I really like what's called a jet boil. For those of you who don't know what that is, I mean, get out from under your rock. <laughs> they are the best. But they make backcountry cooking so easy. And we're gonna fire this up right now and get our uh, our main course going. And I think tonight we deserve home style chicken and rice, heavens to Betsy. That'll send me straight to sleep. <laughs> so yeah, let's get this going. This is gonna be my first time trying the peak refuel, so I'm really excited to see those mountain ops, man, they send my gut straight to the underworld. <laughs> Something to be aware of as well, uh, I, I guess because of altitude, things boil a lot faster. So keep that in mind. You don't gotta, you got, you don't gotta watch this pot. It'll, it'll burn quick, especially with the jet fuel. I think we're already almost there. Now we gotta do, pour it in, and let the magic happen. Let the, let the peak refuel take over. I am going to give it a quick stir. Then all you gotta do is, oh, not spill it. <laughs> Seal this up, give about 10, 15 minutes, and it should rehydrate all that stuff and you're eating high, high on the hog. <laughs> okay, step one is well out of the way. Step two, clean clothes. <laughs> I'm still wet and I'm still dirty, and I think it, I don't know, I think it's a peace of mind thing, having nice dry clothes and maybe cleaning yourself up a little bit before you go to sleep. I mean, maybe call me a prima donna, but it, it sure is nice. And that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna kind of wipe down, 
get my extra clothes on, bundle up real good. I think it's going to be a cold one. And yeah, dinner should be ready by then. Good, 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 good. Alrighty, the obligatory camp chores are done. I'm clean, got dry, warm clothes on, and if you guys at home could queue up Spotify for me, Brooks and Dunn, brand new man, that is exactly how I'm feeling right now. I saw the light, I've been baptized, let me tell you. <laughs> you can't put a value on after being wet and just nasty all day, being clean, dry, and warm. Oh, it's the, oh, it's the pinnacle. <laughs> but right now, I think is a perfect time to grab our peak refuel, maybe a cliff bar, maybe if I feel frisky, and go sit and watch this amazing sunset over quite the incredible valley. So, enough talking, let's get to eating. As the sun is setting on our mountain valley paradise, I gotta do two things. One, I'm gonna keep an eye out for critters because this is prime time. Two, I think it's time to do an official peak refuel review. <laughs> So this is my first time ever trying out uh, Peak Refuel. And, and for those of you who don't know, the whole backpack uh, meal scene is, it's its quite competitive, I'll give you that. And you know, so far the ones that I've tried, uh, just kind of are what they are. They're quick calories, high sodium, but on the back side of things, they leave you feeling like uh, garbage, <laughs> let's just say. So by high, high, high recommendation, I was told to get peak. Shout out to my boy Nick. You're the real one. <laughs> so this is, uh, they say it's, it's kind of a, a different, it's a different freeze dried meal. A little bit better quality, uh, better, let's just say ingredients. Oh, heavens the Betsy. Holy shnikes. This looks so flipping good. Oh yeah, baby. That is, that is home style if I've ever seen it right there. Looks like we got some Carrots, some chicken, mushrooms, rice. This is, this is incredible. This is living large. Dude, that's stupid good. Oh my gosh. This is freeze dried. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> the rice isn't even crunchy. That's insane. I feel like every one of these like rice dishes I get, no matter how long I let it sit, that rice is like, uh, it's like Pop Rocks. Mmm. <laughs> wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is uh, 10 out of 10. Uh, well, this is gonna be my this is gonna be my view for the rest of the night. <laughs> I I can honestly say that uh, I don't think there's a restaurant in the world that has a view this nice. If you do, I'd like to shake your hand and say, "Wow, you, you done did it!" But but well, howdy, I, <laughs> I don't think that's happening. This valley is incredible. Everything about it is just stunning. It's it's picture perfect, and you know, getting here today was not easy. Um, probably about halfway through the trek up. I was sucking wind so bad. I, I had to stop a couple couple times and really gather myself because between the altitude and the weight, I, I packed too much. It's clear to see I've got everything in the kitchen sink. But you know, when you're fishing, filming, and then semi-novice to backpacking, it's uh, I don't know hard to calibrate. And I I'm a dumb dumb. I packed too many clothes. I packed the wrong tent. It's it's a learning curve, you know. But getting here and, and putting my toes down in this creek, I think it's um, it's one of the forks of the Ute or the main Ute. I, I can't quite tell, but it's the Ute drainage that we're in, so it's one of the creeks, Ute Creek. <laughs> I was I was coming originally expecting uh, Rio Grande Cutthroat. That's kind of what I thought they were known for. Unfortunately, all we found were brookies, and, and I say unfortunately, like it's a bad thing, and it's not. The I was chewing all you know in, in my in my nog. I was chewing over it today. At just the giddy excitement and the the nostalgia. It was hitting. It was hitting so hard. And I guess the best way I could describe it, it'd be like the the innocence or the the beauty of a first kiss. 
not to get too romantic or sentimental, but when I was first developing my love of fishing, it was through Meadow Brook Trout, mostly in Estes Park, but nonetheless, it, it was ripping rooster tails or, you know, as I got older, throwing flies, just shadowing my dad, and, you know, we, we, we had a great time. And it, a stream like this in a place like this just hits me perfect, right? Right where, right where I was, and I was like, 10, I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. Maybe I'm getting too romantic about it. <laughs> The valley's bringing it out of me, but, oh man, but yeah, this valley, it's truly incredible. I, I would have to say it's well worth the hike up, no matter how grueling, how many log jams you gotta go by. Uh, I've heard a lot about the Wiminooch, and from all accounts, it's like one of the last wild places in Colorado that doesn't get smoked by crowds and doesn't really uh, have that touristy candy vibe to it. And I, hand of God, witness, saw one person today. He was backpacking all the way to Ute Lake and then doing some hellish pass. I don't know. But that was the only person I've seen. I've seen sign of people, but otherwise, no. Just, just solo. And I think it's a rare commodity to find solitude. And even, even rarer, I would say, in a place like this. This is... You're just adding extra elements to it where you, you are truly humbled by what you see. So I implore you to get out and see this kind of stuff while you still can, if you can. Because you never know, you never know when it can all get taken away. But I don't want to get too down. This is incredible. We've got a big day tomorrow. The day. Tomorrow is the day. <laughs> so, folks, those of you out there that have stuck around for this entire whatever this is trip vlog fishing day i don't know watching mike suck air <laughs> i appreciate it i do um this channel is growing really really quick and it's it's starting to get to the point where i'm i, I don't know it'd be really cool to do this a lot more and the more you guys that support the more you guys that you know like comment subscribe it, it seems like i'm hauling myself out but that's the youtube algorithm it's, I, I don't know, the more that stuff gets smashed, the more it gets recommended, the more you can build an audience and then sustain yourself. I don't know. But it's amazing to me how quick this channel is growing, and, and it's because of you, you OGs especially. I appreciate it. So just want to say from the bottom of my heart, on top of the <laughs> Women Ooch Wilderness, thank you. Thank you so much. And whenever you're making your way, well, hopefully out west very soon because the good days are coming. I sure hope you keep your feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines. <sighs> good morning. <laughs> the sun is getting high and it's getting light. I might have overslept, but you know, I, after yesterday, I, <laughs> I probably need it. But I think the game plan right now is I'm gonna grab the bear bag. I'm not all that hungry, even though a nice cup of coffee does sound pretty stellar right now. This life bringing cup of joe is brought to you in part by Noble Tree Coffee. <laughs> no free shout outs, but they reached out to me and uh, they, they showed me that some pretty nifty travel options for backpacking camping etc and I get you know I thought I'd give it a try and this is this is pretty dang good good coffee better than the <laughs> instant Folgers I was drinking but I'll get this uh, down the hatch maybe some trail mix and we'll get moving in that direction Jesus Christ Wow, leave no trace, guys. Good job. Great job. We'll make sure to pick that up on our way out. All right, my Onyx says we have five miles to the lake. And I'm thinking that got a little bit more pep in my step and a lighter backpack 
So I think we can make it there in better time than we did, you know, <laughs> yesterday. Oh man, we are getting a lesson in altitude adjustments right now. So let's get our hike on and get blasting down this trail and get on some dang cutthroat. Let's go. Hey bear. Hey bear. Well, it would seem as though we've made it to Shangri-La, literal paradise. I, and fun fact, we have it all to ourselves, at least as of right now. This is this is so incredible. Are you? Guys, this view is amazing. This is actually the Continental Divide. That's what you're looking at right now. So that's pretty neat. <laughs> but before we get fishing going, my stomach is is quite rumbly. I'm gonna get some get some food going, get some water going. Get our rods rigged up, maybe dry out our clothes a little bit, and hey, we'll be fishing, so stick with. Yeah, we want to get that dried out. that oh my gosh oh my god that was a big bug too <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> let's give you a quick look the first Rio Grande cutthroat of the trip that is fantastic We'll get this guy back. That might not be the best thing. That might have been on our first cast. That's some seriously bad luck. That is what we got him on. Size 20 some odd midge. Crazy. Oh. When that lake surface is smooth as glass and that sun is shining down from on high, this kind of fishing is extremely visual. So when you do see one, you kind of got to be quick draw McGraw with that double haul and results may vary. Oh yeah, oh rats, right away. Oh for Christ's sake, I need to set the hook.
That is a fantastic cutty. That is so nice. Came up and slammed that leech. See ya, sir. Kind of a tan and pink uh, leech. Figured it looked like a, a nice cutty, so that's what we got him on. We really had to strip set that guy in. Do you see that? I took a couple steps back too. That was hilarious. While I'm stripping in, I'm always keeping my eyes peeled. And from my right, I can see a fish cruising in. So I made a nice, quick, short cast to where he would be. Strip, strip, strip. And the result is... Wow. Okay, this one is absolutely gorgeous. As you might be able to hear, we're no longer alone. There's a big group of backpackers over there just taking a rest, which is totally fine. I think they'll be on their way here soon. But the bites really slowed down. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna switch up, see if I can't uh, <laughs> elicit a bite by changing up my approach. And maybe something a little bigger on the dry fly, maybe something a little smaller on the on the nymph or the streamer, I guess. I don't know, we'll see. This is the joy of lake fishing. It's <laughs> just switch up till you find what works. These guys are proven to be quite floppy. But that seems to be about the average size. That is a fantastic fish. He is so good looking. And he's gone. That's so sick. It's been a while since our last fish, but I will say, the sun is high in the sky now and the wind, it's really given the, the water a nice chop. But I found a really nice drop off where I can see it go from pretty light color to just dark, dark blue. That means there's probably gonna be, you know, a depth change. <laughs> so I've changed up my rig yet again, going back to uh, kind of more of a, a leech bite. I had a, a leech and a midge on and that wasn't working, so I'm double leeching right now and fingers crossed, that is the money. Oh, literally first cast in there. Let's go. They like that big boy. Come on, brother. Yeah, you're a spotty son of a gun, aren't you? Well, that was all but first cast of the new spot right on that drop off. Oh, that's exactly what you want. Now these guys have been Flopmaster 3000s. So beautiful. Ah, there we go. That, <laughs> that is excellent. See ya, sir. Yes, let's go. Oh, yeah, baby. Just a, pa a passerby, got him. <laughs> Another great fish. Look at that guy. That's a leech eating son of a gun right there. <laughs> what a great fish. That's so sick. See you, sir. Cruising for bruising. Ah, oh, that's so sick. There we go, there we go. Little guy. <laughs> These cutthroat are the biggest flop boys I've ever seen. But they're gorgeous, so it's okay. I give them a pass. <laughs> he literally went right by me. That is insane. Sir, thank you, man. I'm going to take that to the bank. 
Oh, well, there it goes. Check this out, y'all. We got ourselves a little Yodi action. Where'd you go, bitch? I was wondering why all the ground squirrels are sounding off. That's a that's a coyote right there. They're not having any of that. You can kind of hear the warning sounds going off. I was wondering what was going on, but all these rodents in the valley are freaking out because there's a coyote passing through. How cool is that? See ya. There we go. That feels like a better fit. Just got a strip set into him, baby. Oh, look at this little FICA. I think here is as good a place as any to listen to the pika, watch the trout, <laughs> eat dry flies, not mine, and maybe uh, grab some lunch. See, that might be rain, folks. Been quite a few uh, missed hook sets since our last fish, but that's a that's a dandy. That's a bullet right there. I'm gonna send him back real quick. Okay, this is a perfect example. I see a cruising fish. Oh, he just ate. These guys are usually pretty aggressive. There we go. Yes, that is what we want. This afternoon has been all about the cruising fish. Any fish that we're actually getting to go after our, our leech has been one that's cruising by. And usually those are the aggressive ones, so. Man, he's beautiful, you gotta get a look at this guy. Check out that eye, this one has it too, that's so cool. What is going on there, buddy? Such floppy boys, I tell ya. Get you one last two on this goofy looking Rio Grande, man. That's so sick. We'll send it back. But that really seems to be the name of the game, catching those cruisers slipping. Comes on here, comes on. Oh, I spooked him, rats. Unlike some of the other ones. Oh, well, <laughs> he's gone. Well, this is looking to be our last Rio Grande cutthroat here at West U Lake. <laughs> Let's send this guy back swimming. 
Well, as much as it pains me to say, I think that's gonna be our last fish. So it's time to pack up the bag, get everything kind of ready for our inevitable hike out. There's a couple things I need to do, fill up water, uh, you know, pack down the rods, everything. Maybe clean, <laughs> I'm dirty as hell right now. And yeah, that's that hike out. We've got five long miles, mostly downhill though. So that's, that's a good thing, that's a win. Well, let's, uh, let's get after it. All right, you know the deal. I'm gonna get dinner ready, clean, change, bed. <sighs> All right, well we let that sit. I'm gonna get changed, try and clean up a little bit, get some, uh, self-care going I got all sorts of stuff going on and then uh, yeah hopefully dinner will be ready and we can chow down and here we are again yet another peak meal and I'm so off the wall excited to try this teriyaki the chicken last night was it was really good this this oh my gosh this smells amazing and I think it's it's always kind of one of them things it's like uh, yeah, looks good, smells good. You could put glue in front of me and I'd probably eat it right now. I'm so dang hungry. After a day that we had, I think I'm running off of like a couple handfuls of trail mix and a cliff bar. That's it. So this is our first real meal and I uh, I don't know if I can wait any longer, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go in. Mm. <laughs> Mm. All I can say is two for two. Oh my gosh. Looks like I got peppers, green beans, rice, carrots, chicken. Mm. Are you kidding me? This is amazing. If I had another thumb to give, I'd give it. That's two thumbs up good. Mm. All right, enough more of you watching me eat. I'm gonna finish this up, scarf this down, and then we'll, we'll, meet, we'll link back up for now. Let's take a look at this amazing valley. This is best seat in the house. Well, that shadow is, it's the curtain. That's our calling card. Mother Nature is telling us that, uh, son, <laughs> it is the beginning of the end. Our time here in Colorado, our time in the Women Nooch Wilderness. I, I hope I'm saying that right. I, I try to look up pronunciations. Women Nooch, not the E, so it's not Women Nooch E. I wanted to say that though, <laughs> but for real, it's coming to an end. This is our last night, and overall, I have to say that this is well, number one, one of my bigger solo trips, which is crazy to think about. And number two, just so, so much more physically tasking than I thought. You know, you can sit there and you can you can look at a map and it says 13 miles. You can look at the elevation change. Oh, 2,000, okay. You can look at your backpack and there's 50, 40, you know, 60, whatever weight you put to that. But until you get your boots on the trail and you actually gut it out, the, the physical requirements, I mean, it's, maybe that's why I have such a bad memory, because I forget how, <laughs> how much work it is, <laughs> but it's work well worth it, I mean, look at this valley, 
it's the, the the I guess what I'm getting at is the the physical stress that goes into it is almost it's almost made worth it and then some by this or by the stream fishing that we did or the lake fishing that we did it, there's something about having to work a little extra harder having to, to grit it out what um, I think Stephen Ranella calls gur you, you gotta have a little bit of gur yeah, your feet are wet who cares blisters rubbing I don't know yeah of course they are <laughs> you just gotta gur through it and, and it it brings you to some weird euphoria, some weird high, sitting at the top of the world, looking at this. It's just, it's just so, it's so rewarding, and I think overall, I came here to do two things: one, high alpine stream fishing, which we did, check; two, high alpine lake fishing, which is quite possibly my favorite thing to do in the world. <laughs> like. If I if I had to die, if I was like I got cancer and was gonna die in like two weeks, it'd be like okay, well, I'm going back to that lake and just leave me there till I die. <laughs> it is seriously the most fun I can I can imagine having. But we came, we saw, we conquered. We did exactly what we wanted to do. On top of all the physical requirements, on top of managing a camp, it it's so fulfilling, it's so rewarding, and I am. Well, I'm biased when I say I think you should do it too because there's not much better feeling in the world than sitting where I am looking at looking at that. I mean, ah. I know it's it's not readily available to all physical requirements, um, monetary requirements, time requirements. It's I am I have the 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 beauty and the pleasure of being a bachelor with ample time and uh, and disposable cash, let's just say. So, I guess I should retract that statement and just, and just say that uh, if you're looking to do something like this, don't hesitate, pull the trigger. And for those of you who have stuck around for this entire endeavor, you know the the beginning, middle, end, the the crescendo, the peak, the valley. What a thank you so much. And it's so very strange as I'm sitting alone on a big old rock looking at this massive valley oh and the continental divide by the way talking to a black box and trying to emote like actually how thankful I am for your support I never really it feels strange and if I could <laughs> reach through and shake your hand and say thank you so much I would and I you know I it wouldn't be a dead fish it'd be a firm handshake I promise <laughs> But like, it's it's seriously so strange to think where this community is is going and and how fast it's growing and the the possibilities of, I mean, who knows where this thing could go? I I, I work a nine to five job and can't say that I love it, but I love doing this, and and to think that this is a possibility that I could be doing this more, that gets me so excited and it's it's all because of you guys' support so. Again, thank you. <laughs> oh, but as that curtain gets pulled tight, my eyes are going to be shutting. So I think I'm going to scoot. And I just got to say, as always, folks, make sure to keep those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines. Yo, you scared the daylights out of me. 
What are you? Besides mad, what are you? <laughs> Alrighty. Sorry, honey. I'll leave you alone. Finishing this journey up where we started. Let's do this. Well, as always, Pass Mike seems to be right here. I am way too tired and have too many miles to be doing an outro. So, Pass Mike, take it away. Tucked away in the southwest corner of colorful Colorado is over 500,000 acres of public land. It contains the headwaters of the Rio Grande and the San Juan alike. It is a true, true bastion of wilderness. And I just spent three days camping, hiking, backpacking, and fly fishing in a little teeny tiny segment of really what this massive piece of public land has to offer. Now, in my brief time here, I think that there was a couple really key things that I, I, I saw or experienced that I'd like to share with you. Maybe if you're new to the area or are looking to come to a place like this, it might be valuable to have a couple of these things in the noggin before you make your way out. And moving forward from that, we're gonna be looking at the weather, the flora and fauna, the, the wildlife of sorts, what to bring, and then finally, some safety measures, something to keep in mind. So let's jump right into the weather. Looks like rain. Now I know, I know, I know, I'm not a meteorologist, I'm just, I'm just some guy. I will say though, this is the mountain west. I don't care where you are, North, central, south, anywhere in the Rockies, you're gonna have some really wild weather patterns. For this particular trip, I got extremely lucky. I didn't see an ounce of rain. Now, what you should be prepared for is literally everything. Chris Traeger, literally everything. <laughs> it's just, it's important to have all sorts. Rain gear, warm gear, hot gear. I mean, you need to be ready to shed layers because the sun will burn you out quick. It's just, there's such a wide variability in the mountains. It's something to keep in mind and it's something to be prepared for because you don't want to get caught with your pants down or <laughs> stuck in a rainstorm. And yeah, sorry, starting with the boring stuff, but it's important. Now we'll move to the fun stuff, the flora and fauna. Okay, okay, I'll drop the pretentious act. We're talking plants, we're talking animals. And in a place like, well, the Wiminooch, it is still such a bastion for wild things. Starting with our fur guys, we got to see, well, moose, elk, deer. That's like the triple crown right there. We saw coyotes, we saw all sorts of little rodents, and oh my gosh, if y'all don't know what a pike is, it's like, it's like a guinea pig had a baby with a rabbit, and then also like was cousins to a mouse. It is the cutest thing in the world. Finishing it off, we saw a lot of sign of critters and what sign is that could be tracks that could be scat that could be you know structures beaver dam no beavers i will say we didn't see a bear thank thank the lord not a fan of bears but they're out here and they're what i've from what i've heard pretty thick out here so something to keep in mind but moving off of our furry critters let's go to our feathered critters there's so much in the way of migratory songbirds that come up into these valleys. I don't know any of the actual taxonomy behind them, I just know that they're beautiful and they, they sing a lovely tune. Going from our feather to our scaly guys, our, our fish, we came for the Rio Grande cutthroat and we found them up in a high alpine lake, just swimming and loving their life. Some pretty big ones too. And in the mountain valley, we found Eastern Brook Trout. And for those of you not hip to the whole native trout dealio, Brook Trout are not native. Now, in a place like this, they are purely, purely wild. They're probably, they've been there longer than I've been alive. So it's one of those weird controversy things. It's like, well, they're naturalized at this point, blah, 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 whatever. Very cool to see both those species. And then finally, ending it up with the, the creepy crawlies. You're gonna have your mosquitoes, you're gonna have your grasshoppers, your butterflies. So you're gonna have this whole wide range of bugs. I mean, I, I, I could sit here all day and name them all. The alpine environment 
is absolutely crawling with life. If you were just to sit down and just stand still for just a second, you'll see ants, you'll hear grasshoppers, you'll hear birds, you maybe see a deer off in the background. There is just, there's abundance, abundance of life, which is so cool. And that should be reason alone to come out here. And if that's not it, maybe, you know, maybe critters aren't your thing. Let's talk plants. I mean, first and foremost, we're looking at a wall of evergreens and aspens all around. I mean, that's like the, yeah, that's the typical Mountain West. But what is really cool, what really kind of sets this sort of environment apart would be the mountain wildflowers. And me being so dumb, I'm like, oh look, it's an Indian paintbrush. Oh look, another Indian paintbrush. These are all Indian paintbrushes. Wrong. <laughs> There's so many different species of wildflowers. And in my ignorance, I don't know the, again, the taxonomy behind them, but hopefully as I'm explaining this to you right now, I'm putting up the footage of the actual names and identification of all the different flowers that we saw. I mean, it, it's seriously a work of art walking through these valleys and seeing just such a wide range of, of species of flowers, so very cool. So now we've seen both the weather and the critters. Now let's talk packing, what you should pack. I would say pack as light as you can, but don't leave out these three main things. First of which being some sort of cookware. And when I say cookware, I'm talking a propane burner. You, know, you, you can find them in all sorts, Coleman, Jetboil, the whole gamut, I have a Jetboil. In a place like the Wimanooch, Colorado, anywhere in the Mountain West, fire is always, always taboo. If you look at any of the, the fire danger, moderate, high, blah, 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 it is usually throughout the summer months, always high, and there's always some sort of class one, two, three fire distinction where you are not even close to allowed to build an open fire. So keep that in mind because you need to have something to cook with and you know boil water if you need to purify water. The, the, the list goes on and on why these things are so key and convenient as well. The next thing I think kind of goes without saying would be rain gear. And this isn't just for your own personal self. I would say having a good rain tarp for your tent is so important. Even if it doesn't rain, it's gonna keep the dew off of you, all your gear. It's just getting wet in a place like this. Yeah, sure, in the afternoon it might feel good, but if you don't get if you don't get dry and if you don't get somewhere where you can be dry, you could be in some serious trouble as that evening chill starts to move in. And again, I, I might be preaching to the choir here. This might seem simple, but it's it's very very key. And the third and final thing I think is important, no matter what you're doing in the outdoors, would be a basic med kit. Having the basic necessity, something to pat yourself up with, you know, aloe for your skin. I mean, the sun is gonna be beating down on you. You're gonna get poked, you're gonna get scratched. Having something even minor to get you where you need to go, or at least pat yourself up to the point where you can get in and out of a place is key. And again, this may sound super basic, but I, I promise you, it'll <laughs> it'll save you a lot of a lot of hassle in the long run. All right, so that is what you should pack. The last thing we need to look at is the the some of the safety elements you need to be aware of when you're coming to a true wilderness like the Wimanooch. Sending my obligatory, I am on my way. So there you go. <laughs> now, in a place as vast and wild as the Wimanooch, you got to be safe. There are a lot of, uh, let's just say risks involved, um, solo backpacking, even backpacking in a group out in the middle of flipping nowhere like this. And it's always key to put that into your pre-trip planning and make sure you're aware of these various things before you come out here. And I'm gonna go over three in particular that are most applicable to this time of year in a place like the Wimanooch. Now, first and foremost, wildfires and it's not just exclusive to the women i'm talking all throughout the mountain west from damn near june to september it's fire season there's a lot of good resources out on the web i'll link some down below the ones that i use to track the various forest fires that are going on 
because <laughs> you got to be aware. It's, it'd be a real shame if you show up to the trailhead, there's nothing but fire trucks, or you're camping on one ridge, and over the next ridge you see a black plume of smoke and you have no idea what's going on. Having an idea of where the fires are, where they might be moving, how controlled they are, will always serve you in the actual, you know, execution of your trip. The second thing I wanna highlight <laughs> is bears. Those of you who know me, you know I'm paranoid. I am I'm very spooked when it comes to bears. I've had one very damning experience that has kind of uh, made me hyper aware of uh, bears and bear activity. And there's a lot of preventative measures that you can take in order to avoid any sort of interaction. And that's, that's the best course of action in my opinion. I personally carry bear spray. I, since the interaction, whenever I've been in the Mountain West, I carry it almost religiously. I've used it, I know it works. It's always a good thing to have. It's pretty, relatively cheap and really easy to use. So in the great gun versus bear spray debate, I sit on the bear spray side. That's up to you. The other thing with a camp and making it bear safe, hanging up your bear bag, cleaning up your trash. This is just common sense camp sort of knowledge. But for real, it, it makes a significant difference. Hanging up your food far away from camp, cleaning up your camp to, uh, I, I would say a pristine level before you leave camp, before you go to bed. Anything that can prevent that, uh, that critter coming in and around close to your camp, close to you. And the third and final thing <laughs> that I think you should be aware of is that you are going to be mostly alone. I think there's I think there's a tent all the way out there. I've seen you know a group of backpackers and maybe two other people camping. That is it. I've spanned I mean we're, we're talking close to like 15 miles worth of land and you, that's all you've seen. You are alone. I, I carry what's called a, a Garmin InReach, it's the Mini, and it is a pretty much direct lifeline to help. Granted, it's a subscription, it's gonna cost you a little bit extra, but if you were to break a leg, or you were to get you know, violently ill because you drank bad water, you're so screwed out here. <laughs> like, like there's no one, no one coming to rescue you if they don't know you're here. I bet nobody even has an idea. I'm on this rock talking to, well, a black box, a camera. <laughs> but seriously, you're alone. You can go with a group, e even then it's still dangerous because how, how quickly can somebody carry you out if you yeah were to break a leg or seriously hurt yourself? Those Garmin inReaches, and this isn't a plug to Garmin, bleh, I know, sorry, but they have an SOS feature where you can just click SOS and you, you, know, you have an expensive, but you have a means out of the, <laughs> let's just say the crud. So we've looked at the weather, we looked at the wildlife, we looked at what to pack and maybe what not to pack, and finally, the safety elements. And I can say that, you know, <laughs> three days of being immersed in the Wiminooch, I I think I think I'm in love. This is this is seriously one of the coolest trips I've ever been on. This is possibly my biggest solo backcountry trip and possibly the longest too. I mean this is every element that went into this trip was incredible. The hiking, the backpacking, the camping, the fishing, everything, seeing all the wildlife that we did made it so worth it. It's just like these compounding elements that just make the whole trip worth it. It's like this this whole encompassing beauty of it all. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's so hard to explain unless you were to actually come out here and, and, and do it yourself. And I understand that I'm very privileged in the fact that I'm a bachelor with disposable cash and I can just kind of go and do silly stuff like this. I don't have time restraints and you know, I don't have to, <laughs> I don't have to really do anything. It's, it's the, I guess the beauty of, of being a bachelor. And I will say, I won't, I won't implore you, but if you are interested in something like this, I would, I would without hesitation, pull that trigger. 
because this is truly amazing and to experience something like this really could be once in a lifetime so <laughs> if that wasn't the biggest plug to the women hooch, I don't know what is. But any of you who have stuck around to this point, I so appreciate it. I know this is a little bit different than most of my fishing style content. I just, I don't know, I figured this was important. This is a, a brand new place and just some things to maybe keep an eye out for, <laughs> to understand before you were to come. I don't know, if I had this, I would probably appreciate it. I probably would have packed better, but <laughs> that's beside the point. <laughs> So folks, as always, thank you so very much for sticking around and you OG subs, you, you YouTube commenters, everyone on the Discord, y'all y'all are the best, that's it. Y'all are the freaking best and I so very appreciate it. So wherever you find yourself, be it in a random mountain valley or sitting at home, make sure to keep those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines. Oh, howdy there. I guess, I guess if you've seen this, that means you've made it to the end of the video. And if you made it to the end, watch it all the way through. All I got to say is thank you so much for your support. It seriously, it seriously means the world. And if you are binging all the fly all season content, if you are just so dialed in on the FAS, whatever it is, go check out the Discord, go check out the Instagram. I know you hear me saying that. I know you can scroll through it, but I'm, I'm serious. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to put it right here. It is popping. We've got pictures and videos from adventures like I'm on right now, which you'll you'll see later. <laughs> and then on the Discord, dude, the Discord is so much fun. We've got we got this fly of the month contest going on, and every month it gets better and better and better. And people are making some damn crispy flies. And I got to give a quick shout out to this month's winner. That crispy boy is so freaking money. I would eat that any day of the week. So folks, as always, I, I just gotta say, thank you so much for your support. I know I, I try and say it as much as I can, but for real, from my hungry stomach to your home, thank you so much. And yeah, I, I just, I hope wherever you end up, whatever you're doing, hope you're keeping those feet in the water. And until next time, I have to finish this food. <laughs> no, tight lights. <laughs>